Today we uh, we will have two invited speaking from uh, Sol from Solana Foundation and other uh, Taoists, and so uh, we will we will learn uh, Web three games uh, at first, and then we will uh, handle some uh, real uh, uh, real case of Tao uh, from uh, Lorp. So uh, the first lecture uh, will be presented by Solana Korea, uh, Park Kyung Kim, and uh, Cherin Kim. Uh, Park Kyung Kim is senior tech director in Solana Korea, and he has uh, more than 15 years of experience in game industry. So. Uh, he is a game expert, and then he moved into uh, blockchain space. And I think he are he is a uh, he is a very expert in Web three games. So he will introduce uh, what Web three games is and what is the difference between Web two and Web three games. And uh, challenge game is developer relations in uh, Solana Korea. Uh, actually, uh, she made some uh, some lectures in uh, other institutions for uh, Solidity or blockchains. So uh, two speakers will share many experience and uh, many insight for Web3 games. So, uh, welcome them with a round of applause. Yeah, thank you for the kind introduction, Jason. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Terrin. I'm sorry to be here today to introduce you to a game topic, Introduction to Web3 Games. So my goal is to provide an engaging and enlightening lecture about Web3 Games today. So let's dive into the world of the Web3 game together. So. Uh, I want to introduce myself first. So do you know the, about Solana? Solana is the layer one blockchain like Kraken or other blockchain. So Solana having, is having a largest developer community after Ethereum and our work with revolves around supporting this Solana network. So before we start, I would like to give you an overview of the teams that are supporting the Solana network. First, I'm in the Solana Foundation, and the Solana Foundation is a non-profit foundation dedicated to the decentralization and adoption and security of Solana ecosystem. And we have another company called Solana Labs. So another company is Solana Labs. Solana Labs is a building product, tools, and reference implementation to further expand the Solana ecosystem. So we work for a Solana network. So let me try to explain it in a simple, in a simple way. So Solana Foundation is based on community management. We primarily cover business, climate, and developer relations like me, and university relations, strategy, and marketing areas. And Solana Labs is based on technical project. They cover core development and cryptography, client, and library. So Solana Labs is primarily made up of engineers who are tasked with the board oversight of the Solana Network's development. So here in Korea, we have got one engineer specializing in cryptography, GK. And for the Solana Foundation, it's just Hakkyun and me, and two of us are based right here in South Korea. So next, I'm going to proceed with uh, introducing our Korea team. First off, I want to introduce Hakyun. Could you introduce yourself? Hi, uh, thanks. Hello, everyone. My name is Hakyun Kim. I am a senior tech director in Korea. I've been working in the gaming industry since 2001. I have held managerial and engineering roles at companies like Carbo, Unity, and Nexon. I'm passionate about tools and game engines like Unity and Unreal, which help developers create games without any obstacles, even in the Web3 world, I believe. I'm also a contributor to the Solana ecosystem where I help integrate game engine with Solana. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, thank you, Hakyun. So next is me, and I'm Terin. I'm developer relations in South Korea. So I'm currently creating a Solana lectures on fast campus and primarily focusing on the on-chain solutions. So Hakyun is focusing on the off-chain solutions. 
So previously, I worked on the EVM-based development, and since joining Solana, I have been working on the examples and sessions related to transitioning from EVM to SVM, like Ethereum to Solana. So I was a president of Iwa Chain. Iwa Chain is the blockchain club of Iwa Women's University. So I'm now an advisor of Iwa Chain. So that's a wrap of the, our introductions. So today we are going to see the paradigms of Web2 and Web3 games and Hakan will be covering Web2 games and I will be covering Web3 games. So after that, Joni, the general manager of Solana Foundation's games team, will present a new concept called play and earn through a video. So let's get started with the lecture. So back on Hakan again, so, so what's a game? It's a structured activity that people do for fun and competition, as you may know already. Why do we play games? Well, it's fun. Some people play games to relax and distress, while others play them to challenge themselves and improve their skills. Still, others play games to socialize and connect with friends and family and more. Blockchain technology has the potential to make games even more fun in a number of ways. For example, blockchain can be used to create games that are more secure and fair, as well as games that allow players to own and trade their in-game assets. Additionally, blockchain can be used to create games that are more social and interactive. And games that allow players to earn real-world rewards, as you may know right too, for their gameplay. I think blockchain technology has the real potential to revolutionize the gaming industry, and I'm excited to see what the future holds for the games. What makes games fun? Games are fun when they are challenging but not too hard. A good challenge will keep you engaged and motivated to keep playing. There are many different ways to create challenge in a game, like increasing the difficulty of enemies or obstacles, or adding time limits or other constraints. Progression. Games are also more fun when you feel like you're making progress. This could mean unlocking new content, improving your skills, or simply getting better at the game. Increasing your state, stats or abilities help to keep you engaged and motivated to keep playing. Rewards. Finally, games are more fun when you're rewarded for your efforts. This could be in the form of in-game colors, new items, or simply the satisfaction of completing a difficult challenge. Giving players in-game colors that they can use to purchase new items or upgrades, rewarding players with new items or abilities that can help them for us through the game. And giving players the satisfaction of completing a difficult challenge a great age to keep players engaged. Social interaction. Games can also be more fun when played with friends or other players. This can be done through online multiplayer, local multiplayer, or even just sharing tips and tricks with other players online. Social interaction can help to create a sense of community around the game and it can also make a game more challenging and rewarding. So there you have it. These are just a few of the things that make games fun. If you can incorporate these elements into your game, if games with especially blockchain technology, you are sure to create something that people will love to play. So I'd like to introduce more about what games make fun, including Lucha, Looting, and Gacha. So what kinds of mobile games do you play now? So do you know about loot and gacha systems? There are two of the most important features nowadays, especially in mobile games. Loot is when you collect stuff like weapons, armors, or resources from enemies of the environment. Gacha in, is when you try to catch or capture something like a Pokemon or a monster. Both loot and gacha can be really rewarding since they let you improve your characters or collect rare items. Taking us as a sense of excitement and tension to the game, since you never know what you might find. For example, Diablo, Destiny, Pokemon Go, Monster Hunter, all of these games are good examples of looting and gacha. These are just a few examples of many games that use looting and gacha. If you are looking for a game that is both challenging and rewarding, then these types of games are worth definitely worth checking out. Later in this present, we will see how blockchain can help these games too. All right, let's talk about how blockchain can make games more fun. 
So we've already talked about what makes games fun, right? Things like challenge, reward, and social interaction. Now let's see how blockchain can enhance each of those things. What do you think? How can blockchain be used to make games more fun? So blockchain governance can help mobile games with loot boxes in a few ways. First, it can give players more transparency about the odds of winning certain items or rewards. Blockchain can be used to track odds of winning and this information can be made available to players so they know what they are getting into before they spend their money. This can help to reduce the feeling of unfairness that players often experience when they don't get the item or reward, reward they want. Second, blockchain governance can help to prevent developers from manipulating the root box system in order to increase their profits. You can see the image about this, actually. This can help to ensure that the system is fair and the players aren't being taken advantage of. Overall, blockchain governance can help to make mobile games with root boxes more fair and transparent for players. This can help to reduce players' complaints and improve the overall gaming experience. These are just a few of the ways that blockchain governance can be used to improve root box system in mobile games. As the technology continues to develop, we can expect to see even more innovative ways to use blockchain to make games more fair and transparent for players. Blockchain technology can help creators get paid fairly and have more control over their work. This is a big deal actually, and it's going to open up a whole new world of possibilities for creators, especially like mode creators. One of the biggest challenges with user-generated content is authenticity. In the past, it's been easy for people to copy content from others. Blockchain here actually can help address this challenge by creating a record of the content, which can help to ensure that it's authentic. This is important for both creators and consumers of the content, as it can help to build trust and credibility. Another challenge with user-generated content is monetization. In the past, it's been difficult for creators to make a living from their content. This is because the platform that hosts content, such as social media platform and video sharing platforms have typically taken the ownership of the revenue generated from content. I think blockchain can help address this challenge by creating a secure and transparent platform for creators, especially to monetize their content. This can be done through a variety of mechanisms, such as selling NFTs or tokens that represent ownership of the content itself. Finally, blockchain help can help creators to retain more control over their content. This is because blockchain-based platforms are decentralized, which means that, as you may know already, they are not controlled by any single entity. This can help prevent creators from being exploited by platforms or other third parties. I think overall, blockchain technology has the potential to revolutionize the way that user-generated content is created, distributed, and monetized. Blockchain can help to create more often fair and rewarding environment, especially for creators, even in games world. So let's talk about Kickstarter before we go on board about Web3 funding more. Kickstarter is a well-known platform that helps people actually raise money to fund their great creative projects. It is to use and has a large user base. And we have a similar one in Korea too. So it's a great option for anyone who wants to get their project off the ground. However, there are some limitations to what you can get as an investor, especially here on Kickstarter. For example, you are not guaranteed to make a profit. And you may not have any say in how the project is developed. If we are looking to invest in, in a project with the potential to make a lot of money, I think Kickstarter may not be the really best option. Then let's talk about Web3 funding in a new way to invest in early stage project. It's uh, different from Kickstarter in a few ways. So first of all, you can get involved in project earlier on. 
With the Kickstarter, you can only invest in projects that have already been developed and are ready to be released to the, to the public. With the Web3 funding, you can actually invest in projects that are still in the early stage of development. This gives you the opportunity to get a head start on the competition and earn more rewards. You can earn rewards for your investment too. With the Kickstarter, you are usually only rewarded with the product or service when the project is completed or not. With App3 funding, you can earn rewards like NFTs or tokens. These rewards can be used to purchase goods and services on the project's platform. Or they can be traded even on the secondary markets, such as Magigaden and Tensor in Solana. You can provide feedback and suggestions. With the Kickstarter, you are usually not involved in the development of the project itself. With Web3 funding, you can provide feedback and suggestions to the project developers. This gives your voice in the development of the project and helps to ensure that it meets your needs. Overall, it offers a number of advantages of a Kickstarter, such as the ability to get involved in projects on your own and on rewards for your investment. So let's talk about competition and matchmaking in FPS games or League of Legends. Matchmaking is the process of finding opponents for a game. It's uh, like when you go to a bowling alley and sign up for a league. The league will match you up with other players of your skill level so that you can have a fair and competitive game. In video game, Matchmaking is used to find opponents for both ranked and unranked games. Ranked games are where players compete for a leaderboard position, while unranked games are just for fun. Matchmaking is a complex process, but it's essential for the success of any online game. By creating fair and competitive games, matchmaking helps to ensure that players have a positive experience. Okay, I think Mike is too far from me, so I speak out loudly. Web3 matchmaking is the new way to find opponents in competitive games. Are you clear now? Okay. Yeah. It's more transparent and gives players more control over who they play with. Traditional matchmaking systems are limited in the number of options they can offer. They can only match players based on their skill level, which doesn't always meet the needs of all players. Web3 matchmaking uses blockchain to store data about players' preference, skills, and play styles. This data can then be used to match players with other players are a good fit for them. For example, if we are competitive shooter players who likes to play deathmatch, you can use Web3 matchmaking to find other players who are also interested in, in deathmatch. You can also specify your skill level and prefer the game mode. So you are sure to be matched with players who are a good match for you. Web3 matchmaking is also more transparent than traditional matchmaking systems. All of the data used to match players, such as their skill level, experience, and preferred game modes, is stored on a blockchain. This allows players to see exactly how they are being matched and they then to make sure that they are being matched fairly. Back in the day, sorry, it was hard to make secure in game trade, especially in online games. This was a big problem for many games as it led to fraud and scams and ultimately caused some games to fail. One of the main reasons why in game trade was so insecure was because 
there was no way or difficult to verify the history of users. This meant that it was easy for scammers to create fake or new accounts. Another problem with in-game trade was that it was relatively easy for items to be duplicated. This was often done by using hacks or exploits, and it allowed scammers to create an unlimited supply of items, which then they could then sell to unsuspecting players a lot. However, in recent years, there has been a growing interest in using blockchain technology to solve the problem of insecure in-game trades. Blockchain is a secure and transparent ledger that can be used to track the ownership of items. Blockchain makes trade unhackable and permanent. This makes it much more safer platform for trading than traditional methods like in-game marketplace or third-party websites. Blockchain itself also is also a transparent system, which means that all trades are public and can be verified by anyone. This makes it easier for players to track the ownership of items and to avoid scams and cheating. Blockchain can make in-game trading easier to use by providing a simple and user-friendly interface. This can make it more accessible to a wider range of players. So actually, I'm done here with my patch, and then we'll see again in the QA patch at the end of the session. I think then Cherry can explain more. OK, so this is my part. So I want to introduce about the Web3 games history today. So have any of you played blockchain games before? Since joining Solana, I have been playing various blockchain games. To be honest, games like League of Legends, Overwatch, and Minecraft are much more fun and much more familiar and enjoyable to us. So let's uh, start by sorry. figuring out how many and what kind of people are interested in and playing these games. Hi, Cherry. So first, I'm comparing the market cap. So Cherry? market cap is... Can I interrupt me? Can I interrupt you? Uh, before yeah. moving on to your part, uh, yeah. Could you uh, could you tell? Uh, could you talk about uh, the question? Ah, uh, okay. okay. Set up chat box because it, it, ah, those are okay. about uh, the first part. Okay. Okay. So. Okay. Let me get back. So, so Cody asked about uh, information making logic becomes fully transparent to the public. How can studio address issues that you just can explore matchmaking logic so they, they can make games preferable to their side? I think this is a way of thinking, thinking way of the centralized way. So for example, decentralized world here, I think community can they often offer for their users to play their, their uh, Stop, which means that players can choose who actually support this. So this community or this community or this even from the game studio. So they can choose and they have options. So I think th in this way, I think people find pro uh, profitable or more people find their way to, to this. So I think this in this way, naturally can they choose their side, I think. And next one, is that answer for you, Cody? Okay, you can later ask again if it doesn't make sense for you. And Dongi asked about how can blockchain help players select who they are matched with to have the preferred play style. Um, blockchain is open database, which means that they can actually have and can track of the all the players' information. So, for example, if you play League of Legends now, then then you can actually get some information from former game like Rainbow Six or another FPS game. So they can have track record of the transparent blockchain database. So if it's all Web3 games. So in this way, I think you can find your match find, finder, even it's kind of new web, uh, FPS game in the, in the Web3 world. So I believe the blockchain always have kind of open transparent database can help this way. Is that answer for you, Tungi? Yep. 
So if there is no more, okay, I'm waiting for you to meet. Uh, so I think that real reporting, I believe, I feel like it's more like what where well they're playing actually. So for example, let's make logic itself can be uh, decentralized by community, but you can still choose your way. So if you play in this way, then you can go to some community. And if you play, want to play in this way, you can go to another community. And another one from Dongi, uh, players, so does that mean the playing style from other games can be tracked? Yes, so in blockchain world, I mean, ideally, they have opened your database and they take, you can track all the records of the games. So in general, I think, I, I feel like game, game developers or game companies maybe try to hide some more information, but in general, ideal world, all the information will be open to public and then they can do like uh, making community on top of this database and on top of this, they can do. So I think this is a more like a uh, concept or ideal world with blockchain. So is there any following of questions or do, any more questions from others? Okay, so if then chatting can continue. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so I will continue my part. So yeah, so I want to introduce about the market cap of the between the Web two game and Web three games. So first, I will compare the market cap. So market cap is lower compared to the existing Web two gaming market. So Web two global game market has one hundred ninety six point five billion, and Web three global market has about ten billion. And next one is monthly active users. So next I co have compared monthly active users. So while there are limitations to comparing casual game, X Infinity and hardcore games, League of Legends. So these numbers provide a lot of idea of user counts. So the highest MAU for X Infinity, the most well-known game in Web3 was 2.7 million. And however, the average MAU for the League of Legends is 120 million. So this tells us that Web3 games are still in their infancy. And lastly, we turn our attention to region distribution. You might find it surprising how it closely aligns with the spread of mobile Web2 games users. So even through it might appear that Web3 games are played in Asia, they're actually being enjoyed by the diverse range of players from the various countries. So next, I would like to discuss the current state of Web3 gaming. The gaming itself doesn't have significant differences from Web2. Many games feature some most data uploaded on chain, so employ a cryptocurrency-based currency system or strive to leverage the advantage, advantages of blockchain. So this case study is based on the five games shown next to it. So today, we will cover a total of five examples. So we will explore Axie Infinity of Ethereum and Stefan and Star Atlas on Solana, some mini games, and Maple Story. So through Axie Infinity, we will be in, we will I will introduce the concept of play to earn. And with Stefan, we will look into move to earn. And afterwards, for Metaverse and AAA games, I will be showcasing Star Trust. Then we will move on to the explorer strategic aspects of mini games and Maple Story, our most famous Web2 game. So first, before the introducing X Infinity, I want to talk about token economy. So token economy is providing services that leverage coins and tokens on the blockchain to generate revenue. And token economy is securing liquidity and activating the games by giving rewards to back game users. So if you get an in-game activity on in-game, so it can be changed to token. So it calls a uh, tokenization and the token, it can convert to cash and we can consume token in-game. 
So it is designed based on game theory and incentive system. So typically, it forms an economic structure that allows appropriate viewers to be returned according to the level of a participation. And each game is constructing its own unique token economy and the nature and purpose of the game have a close relationship with token economy. You can check these token economies on the white paper or the game instruction. So I want to introduce about the X Infinity. X Infinity is the most famous Web3 game, I guess. So Play to Earn is a category of blockchain-based games with player-owned economies enabled via in-game in-game assets represented by tokens and NFTs. So if you play a game, you can earn the assets, tokens, or money from the game. So X Infinity is a collectible card mobile game developed by the Vietnamese startup Sky Marbis. And it is a first generation game that kick off of the play to earn model. And it is a turn-based RPG that arose three on three battles where players collect and form parties with virtual animals called axes for battles. So these are axes. So you can buy and sell axes based on ERC721 NFTs through the marketplace because it is based on Ethereum. And other NFTs such as land and accessories can also be purchased in marketplace. When you win in the game, you earn the asset called Small Love Portion SLP, which can be used to breed axes. Breed means combining the attributes of two axes to create a new axis. So combining them so we can get out the higher level axis. So small rubber portion is an ERC20 token that can be traded on exchanges like Binance or other, ex other centralized exchanges. So the Axie Infinity ecosystem has its own unique governance token called Axie Infinity Shards, XASS. So these are used for participating in key governance votes and inform how funds from the Axie community treasury are spent. So ASX is more focusing on the community treasury and governance votes, and SLP is more than breeding. So the, the we can get uh, rebels from the SLP. So because we can get a higher level axis from the breeding and XASX is focusing on the governance. So almost all Web3 games announced in advance of the distribution and distribution and use of resources. And they write down a white paper that is made available for everyone to see. So you can take a location like this chart and and the XLS use, ca use catered in white paper of the XE. So you can check these stuffs in the white papers and official web page. So you can check the access use cases in that tokenomics chart, and you can check the allocation of the access in this chart. So I want uh, sorry, to introduce- uh, so Yeah. Can I ask something? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, okay, thank you. Uh, actually, X Infinity was very successful since 2021 or 20. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, it was the it was the model of P2E, and yeah. it makes uh, it makes Web3 game very popular. Yeah. But but uh, but I I heard currently it's not the same uh, as uh, 2020 or 21. So can yeah. you share the status of current status of X Infinity? Ah, uh, okay, I can show you. So I prepared this slide to introduce the current state of X Infinity. So you can see the X is surprise schedule. So many of token issuing after the 2020 to 2021. So there's a inflation state situation what occurred. So you can see the check the charts. This is a TVL of the X Infinity tokens. So you can see the 2001 to 2002, there's so there the X Infinity was so popular, but many, many people participated in games. And after that, there's an inflation situation after the 2020 because of the token inflation and they had 
from the other the other the organization and they couldn't the make a more the they they couldn't make a more the utilities utility stops after the launching their games so inflation situation makes the coins price going down make go down they're going down and the current state of x infinity we we can't the we could we could we can't get some the higher the higher the assets from the dead game higher the higher the profits yeah so we can get the higher profits from the 2020 yeah mm. uh so uh it actually when i was when i when i played uh x infinity to to yeah. to make some experience of p2e uh it yeah. was not fun actually <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was very difficult was, to yeah. understand their economy and also um, the character uh, it was not good for me so yeah, why yeah. people yeah. are doing uh, people are doing this game so I didn't understand so at that time yeah. I thought it is very it was very limited to uh, some countries like Philippines to yeah. earn money so uh the players are in philippine filipino gamers they i'm not sure they are enjoying this game or this is is this kind of work for them yeah yeah gaining for gaining so making more money yeah yeah so um, my question is uh pray to on uh i yeah. i so I thought pray to earn concept is yeah. uh, very early stage and also yeah. it makes game not fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't, I don't, that's to the point, yeah, so. I, I agree that, that, I agree that the game is not really fun. So yeah. that's why I really trying to focus on how it makes, what makes actually games fun. So and in in the early stage, I think yeah. play to earn is play to earn is popular because they can make money and people can make money and then it's known for that I think and then it's it's there are some kind of enjoyment with some items dropping items things like that so there are some kind of fun mechanism there too but not really high enough yeah. and also there has some kind of tokenomics problems later on yeah think. so there are lots of problems and then yeah. we believe that uh like in the in the future we will have like different concept like play and own to yeah. me the blockchain technology can help like in game secure trade or better matchmaking things like yeah. that so that we are believe yeah so i think so too so x2 r game is in an early stage so i today i want to introduce other various games in web3 okay so yeah so P pray to earn and move to earn was also in our early stage. So I want to next up to this this slide. I want to introduce the more fun game more than P two E or M two E games. Yeah. So yeah. So I finished the introduction of the X Infinity. So next one is the next one is similar to the similar to the X Infinity, Stefan. So M two E is similar to with the P2E. Pre 2 e is a play to earn and M2E is move to earn. So M2E is the revenue generation model through the movement activities such as walking and, jo and jogging and running. So Stefan is a game five project. So where players can make tokens earned through the work, walking and jogging or running. So the amount of tokens mined varies based on rarity and performance and stats of these of the sneakers. And the daily mining limits also varies depending on the number of NFTs you earn. So if you want to play the Stefan, so you have to buy the sneakers for this game. So, but it gains so many much popularity that it accounts for about 20% of the solar network users. So this is the most famous game in solar network, I guess. So it was one of the cases that onboarded the most web to users to web three. So as I mentioned earlier, Stephen has gained worldwide popularity. The reason why was not because of the innovation concept of M2E, but also because of its high returns. So some people might say, 
how much can I earn by just working? Well, so you we usually use a cache work like a like a application of the our smartphone. So it it costs a low price. So but this Stefan so gives a high return. So with just two hours of exercise a day, some users recorded earning of the over two million won per day. So at April 2020, the GST tokens of the Stephen token that can be mined through Stephen approached at eight dollars each. So we can get a GS token, but GS token is approached at eight dollars each. So with a good performance shield, it was possible to mine over 200 tokens a day, which translate to about $1,600 or the 2.25 million Korean won. So this is a high, high the token prices because of the high token prices. So this is a purely token mining income, excluding supplementary earnings from the minting and selling and shoes, master boxes and so on. Only working, we can we could get a high high money. So make more, we can make a money. High we can make a high money, yeah, a lot of money. So many P2E and M2 platforms enter the market due to the success of X Infinity and Stefan. And these are not fun. Or well, it could be Stefan could be fun, but X Infinity is not fun. So, however, there is an inevitable moment when the supply becomes greater than demand. So X2E models face sudden inflation due to an oversupply of tokens caused by sudden increase in user and failure to secure token burn mechanisms. So XE Infinity is not fun and Stefan is for the walking and there's so uh, on, on another there are not uh, another utilities like a uh, like a uh, working or other stuff. So directly linking income to transitional game model for fun makes it difficult to sustain. So this is uh, not a sustain model to users because it was not fun. So many players play these games for the gain money. So today I want to introduce the there how, how many games in the Web3? How many the non-Web web P2E on M3 games in Web3? So I want to introduce Startrust. Startrust is most famous on Solana blockchain. So this is, is a metaverse and triple A game. So I want to introduce, we have a triple A game in Web3. So Startrust is a new generation gaming metaverse emerging from the confluence of state of state of the art blockchain, real-time graphics, and multiplayer video game and decentralized financial technology. So the game is built on the Solana and use NFTs to represent in-game assets such as ships, planets, and resources. And players can earn Aptras and Force tokens by participating in in-game economy. So Star Trust is under development. So I want to, but I want to show the video of the Star Trust. So I want to introduce, we have a triple A game in the Web3 field. And there is so many potential, there's a potential game. I want to introduce, there are so many potential games in Web3. I think video is not working, so I can share the after the after the lecture to the to show this video. So this video shows uh, so many stops in the games and like uh, similar to Battlegrounds, it is a game that offers a variety of utilities. So there's a big difference. There's a difference from the other P2E and M2 games. So it depends on app. Attempt, ap attempt within the Web3 ecosystem to create a triple A quality games. So I want to, I want to show these, um, these tokenomics. So as you can see, there is a small tokenomics to the, to be you know, not be the sustainable model, but start trust like this, there's a big game, have a big token economy like this. So, you can see the tokens equality over gamers side of the tokenomics. So you can check the white paper or other introduction from the about the star trusts. So yeah. there's a recent. 
Yeah, so however, such drastic games require a minimum of five years or more for development. And games developed by the Web2 companies utilizing their existing domains are expected to be run more quickly. So Stratus is so big game and big tokenomics game. So many web so development period is so is so wrong. So the many web2 companies dive into the web3 web3 market because they have already domain they already have domains and they have already their teams and this is easier than this is, it can be it could be easier than other web3 startups so you can check the startups and big metaverse game platform like a uh, decentraland and sandbox on the other the web3 game side so next one is mini games. So I want to introduce because this is a little different model from the web two model. So in the past, it was not easy to run product combining financial and gaming system. So, but within the decentralization of finance, this is a uh, this is because we can use a blockchain now. So various utilities can be presented. A prime example is a rotary system. So like the that pink up pancake swap. So traditional strategies to attract people from the existing financial system, such as short-term events like a saving events, were similar and struggled to attract long-term interest. However, tokens needed in mini games like pancake swap can help directly acquire the directly acquire DeFi liquidity. And they are also sufficient to attract users because in the pancakes of rotary, you have to buy the pancakes of token to buy tickets. And, and after buying tickets, you can uh, participate in rotary like this. So after that, so we can get a liquidity from the liquidity from users and we make a pancake sub token liquidity. And it could be the more the efficient way to the make uh, make more users. So these mini games are a new solution that's, that captures marketing proposals and liquidity. So many DeFi platforms launch their rotary or their the utility games like this. So I want to introduce mini games that the, in the past, it was not easy to run product combining financial system and gaming system, but in blockchain, it could be. And last one is Maple Story. Maple Story is so, so famous in South Korea. So Maple Story is web two domain games made by made by Nexon. So a blockchain gaming ecosystem based on Nexon's popular IP, Maple Story. This is a Maple Story. And this ecosystem integrates multiple games, NFTs, and services, aiming to connect them into one cohesive platform, allowing players to participate in the Maple Story world in various ways and generate profits. So you can check the next Maple Story universe in this site. And Maple Story universe is is it's made made on the Polygon blockchain. So. Reasons for what is the reason for the traditional web two gaming companies venturing into web three? So elements like NFTs can help to initially understand the general market atmosphere, which is advantageous for startups. So for so formerly, how can tell about the Kickstarter and investment? It could be the advantage for startups, and it became easier to form alliance with other games or platforms. So it could be the more the scalability more than the past. And triggering a variety of on-chain transactions, it can generate fee revenue and aiming to create even more substantial profits than conventional cross web two games. But there are also concern and careful consideration. So if we compare to the established as to market, Web3 is still in the early stage and is relatively immature. So you can see the P2E and M2 games, but it is not a sustained model. It was not fun, but but then but so it, we can so tell we can talk to Web. We can say our opinion. Web3 is in the still in its early stages. So there are concerns that are, and there is also concerns that elements like NFTs could potentially harm intellectual property. And by attempting to integrate blockchain technology partially, we aim to venture into the Web3 business 
in a more stable way. So there's a concerns and there's advantages of blockchain. So, but these days, many Web2 Korea, Web2 Korea gaming company want to deep dive into Web3 because it could be the gaining more money. So it is interesting to see the market, market, uh, market atmosphere these days. So I introduce all of the, the cases in Web3 games nowadays. So next, I want we want to introduce some of the pay and earn. And before that, I want I will check the. Uh, so I can I will check the questions. So Togi asked me, how can NFTs have IP? So I thought NFTs would actually have IP. Yeah, so uh, I want to make an example. So. In the example is um, if we want to make we could, if we want to the buy NFTs on the marketplace, so we can the buy some NFTs from the marketplace. So it is the it is, it is a general way, but next NFTs if next NFT gets popular and there are so many scam NFTs like uh, copying their Apple Story NFTs and other the domains, so it could be make a harm for the NF the previous domain NFTs. Yeah. Is so you sense? mean uh you mean uh there will be a lot of scam NFT project yeah. mimicking yeah. uh Maple Story NFT. Yeah. yeah. Yes, that's possible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think this is a, a way to the to harm IPs from the other companies. I think this is because the IP itself from the next one is too big. So they yeah. need to also protect their own IP to have a really big, good game there. So I think NFT is a little more adventurous, especially for big companies like Nexon, I think. Yeah. So, and before that, um, Nexon can, could make money from the Web2 side, only Web2 side, not Web3 side, because they have a big domain from the their company and they can uh, continue to gain money if they continue to stay in Web2. But they change to the Web3 field, they have to the treat the other side, like uh, uh, how to the, if we can't the lock NFTs in our ecosystem, if they want, if uh, the typical player want to the move their NFTs other chains and they want to make own games from the Nexon, Nexon's NFTs. So Nexon want, don't want to make a, the other the other the two two stage and two stage platform like their own platforms. I think like that, yeah. So they want to the they want they want to the make their domains in their in their ecosystem. But they try to the move other the web three field because of the they want to make a big metaverse platform containing other the maple story domain and other games yeah so they want to connect their all of the games for the their ecosystem in web3 that's the reason why and nexus dive into the web3 metaverse metaverse business yeah so is are there any questions one more question okay mm, uh in web3 games there is one different participant uh, investor, actually token investor or NFT investor. So uh, in Web2 games, there is only gamer, only gamer. Yeah. So uh, who we have to care about, but yeah. in Web3 games, there will be uh, just the investors like token yeah. holders or um, NFT holders. They don't, they don't do, they don't play game. They just expect uh, the, the increase of uh, their asset value. So is it good or bad <laughs> for game? Oh, what is the benefit of, uh, what, what is the pros of uh, investor in Web3 game? I think the best benefit is that, especially compared to Kickstarter or what is it in Korea, that they actually can gain benefits when, game is better and better. So so because when you actually if you invest in Kickstarter or some this, you will get just some kind of card, oh thank you, or some gift and or some game CD. So it's very limited. But 
as a purchase you to invest actually might make them just buy nft then it is more uh, feedback or rewards when game is success successful but on the other hand as you said made the investors especially when they buy nft they also expecting the high price of nft in the future and that's i think i think it's a bit difficult but i believe that's why i think the blockchain can help us in this way i mean this is more like decentralized way and then they want to maybe vote so when the game is updated they may vote so this is okay this is good this is bad so i think by committing have some more control a bit of power and with open database then i think it will ideally it will help then there is there are definitely much more interruptions in during development but i believe this will in result have some kind of good control with controllability from community wise i believe can you control so, the holders yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you control holders? <laughs> yeah, can okay, please. What do you mean? Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, in my experience, uh, the uh, we cannot control we cannot control holders or investors in uh, crypto space, blockchain space because um, mostly they are very activist and. Uh, Usually the provider like uh, DF provider expect they will give very good feedback and they will be uh, early adapter of a service. But uh, in many cases, they make a noise or uh, they just push the provider to, to, uh, to increase the value. So uh, when, when, when a company uh, issue their token, they have two different goals. They will have two different goals. One is uh, making their product good, better. One is increasing their token value. But in many cases, these goals are not synchronized. They are not correlated. So, it makes a tons of different works for a company. So um, that's very difficult issue. Yes, I agree. So I mean, for me, actually, NFT really makes sense. So you can have NFT and then you can have some power of voting to when the game is updated so as an investor. But tokenomics, <laughs> I think it's still some kind of question marks for me. So yeah, as you said, I'm not sure, but tokenomics is a lot of things like inflation rate and the price, everything. Is, I think it's, it doesn't really make sense for metaverse or games. I'm not sure yet, but NFT really makes sense. So, but you really definitely need to think about more about tokenomics in the future. Yeah, so I, we can define them. We are in the early stage in Web3. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I see. <laughs> it, it was my opinion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There so are two more questions. Ah, uh, two more questions. Okay. So. So I have a question too. So we prepare for the we prepare the two minutes video for the explaining the pray and or. So we don't have any times for the introducing them. Is it okay to the past? Has the video or the sharing only sharing bit only sharing a video? It's okay. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, it's okay if we don't have enough time. Uh, okay. asking a question is better. <laughs> it's uh, more. Okay. Yeah. I think so too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, Sue asked me, uh, people can buy step and buy Apple Pay credit cards with a wallet. Does does this approach encourage users to return them to E? Mm. So the before the using Apple Pay and credit cards with wallets, so we use the only the wallets like MetaMask, but if we use the web to the payment system like Apple Pay cream credit credit cards, we could can get some the we can get the profits from the profit. Uh, we can we can get a users. We 
we can get users from the user from the web to site. Is it fix it? Yeah, I think it's it's like uh yeah, if the website people who already have wallets, it doesn't make sense for them to buy something by credit card. I think yeah. they're okay with it. Yeah. Just going forward. But for totally new users from web to onboarding side, I think that it totally makes sense to return to M3. Yeah. But I'm not sure they really make gain some fun there. So it depends on so how they yeah. like it. The yeah. game itself. So it yeah. really depends on the game itself. So if game is fun for them, they can come to more. We put the game is not really fun, yeah. And then they never pay, and they just dropped the game, I believe. Yeah. So web two payment approaches is important to the web two users because this is the general payment system. So I think it could be yeah, great for the web two web two people, I guess. I think it's getting more and more important. I think because like X Infinity, who want to make money, they just join the game. But nowadays, I think. I'm in the future, we believe that the more and more people just for fun, they yeah. play games for fun. So then it means that yeah. they need some kind of web to web to onboarding and then without any wallets. So that 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 means credit card payment would be would make sense for them. Yeah. So that, I believe. Yeah. So uh these days we are working with the web three game companies, but they start to develop. Uh, develop the web two payment system first, and after that they connect to the web three. The after the web two payment after connecting with web two payment system, web two payment system. So, yeah. So I think the Apple Pay credit card payment system is more the the big approaches more than the web three wallets using the web three wallets. Yeah. Okay. So who you asked about free on chain games? So. I, I think free on chain game, maybe some games make sense, but basically blockchain technology is just slow and expensive backend. So which means that if you do interact everything on the web three side, then you need to pay more on the slow and <laughs> expensive backend honestly. So blockchain is definitely like that. So you need, you need to think about that, what blockchain actually enables your game better. Yeah. For example, in game trade or some item trade, NFT, or matchmaking some database. So I believe the game will be balanced with a uh, traditional cloud like Google Cloud or Microsoft Azure, also with the this blockchain technology. This is just kind of backend for the game itself. Yeah. So this should be some, some kind of balancing between them, I believe. Yeah. So pretty on-chain game, definitely some games make sense, like yeah. a lot of money going on and uh, maybe with the DeFi, maybe can make sense. But in general, most games, would be some kind of balancing between normal database or normal cloud service with this kind of uh, blockchain technology. Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, so mini games is a case of the free on-chain games, I guess, because rotary system is the is the, the buying tickets on the Ethereum or other blockchains, and we have to the send transaction to them to participate in rotary. So it could be a good nice cases for the for fully on chain games. And after that, there are so many, many Web3 games who will develop, develop, I guess. So after that, we can see the, the much, many more, many the Web3 games in the Web3, Web3 field, I guess, yeah. Fully on chain games. I'd like to add one more comment in terms of uh, fully on chain games. Uh, I will invite uh, one fully on-chain game company called uh, Topology on StockNet. They are developing fully on-chain game. Actually, it is totally challenging, totally challenging. And I thought him uh, fully on-chain game, uh, fully on-chain game uh, uh, makes a different genre of game because all components of games will be shared to other games. So other game will reuse some components of a game because all components will be shared on top of blockchain. So when I heard that, wow, is it possible? <laughs> but some companies are developing fully on-chain game and it is very challenging technically. So they need a very high, high performance blockchain like L2 uh, or I don't know. Solana. 
Solana, Solana <laughs> and also yeah. they, they they need uh they need uh they need some technology game yeah. uh, to develop uh on chain game. So uh so I will invite invite them uh first June at Kaist. Uh, so if you are interested in developing free on chain game, you can hold from topology. Oh, I want to see this in the lecture too. <laughs> I think so. Bingu said, as I heard from MapStory, the worst product manager, it is a kind of experiment for market analysis. Yeah. That's right. So I, I think as a big company, definitely they will say like that, I believe. <laughs> so it's yeah, it's kind of a first step to expand their network and yeah. their IPs. Yeah. I think for me it's quite interesting. So yeah. because I think their intention is that all the games they have now, they can be integrated into between games. And so cross sub items and things like that. So that'll be very fun. And on the other hand, they are also trying to prevent their IP is used by other communities outside of their game companies, their games. So it, this is also kind of challenging too. For yeah. them as, as blockchain technology itself kind of open database. So they need to somehow hold their database inside there and then communicate between only their, from their games, I think. So let's just see what they're going on. So for me, it's quite interesting, yes. Yep. Any other question? Can you share uh, the video about uh, play and own? We will share the video on this class after this lecture. Uh, okay, so I will send uh, our video to Mingyu. Yes. Uh, yeah, okay. Thank you for the receiving our lecture today. So I want to introduce the play and own because play and own is the new concept of the yeah. web streams, but, but yeah. I hope you you see the our the videos about the play and or later. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Currently, uh, P two E has a lot of noise, <laughs> <Yeah>. make a <laughs> lot of noise. So, uh, we we have to we have to uh look through uh what the benefit of P two E and we have to design another model to apply Web3 and blockchain technology to games. So play to one, yeah, I think it is good uh, alternative to P2E. Yeah. So yeah, actually whenever we go to gaming companies, we already say that the blockchain is slow and expensive backend. And you yes. should think about what benefits you can gain from there. So one thing is that open database and then you can you know, cross between games, things like that. So you should think about it. Otherwise, it will be just yeah, expensive one. Yeah. I think. Okay. Any other question? Okay. Ten minutes. Waiting for ten minutes. <laughs> for more question. Okay, thank you for the great uh, lectures and uh, sharing good advice and experience and insight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes. Uh, we will have a 10 minutes break. So uh, come back by uh, 30, 5.30. We will start 5.30.